Bob Popek is an author and speaker on creative selling strategies. His column appears in many national trade and business magazines. Plus, his creative selling publications are read from coast to coast. He's been a featured speaker at several Buick announcement meetings, and his company specializes in sales and marketing strategies for new cars and other high-ticket items. Here are some practical ideas for following up leads, building a bank of prospects, and finding new Buick customers without relying on walk-in traffic or major dealership promotions. Today's Buick market is changing, and it will take a higher degree of professionalism and selling skills to compete in the marketplace. Here's Bob with some ideas for creating more business for you and your dealership. A short time ago, a fella came into my office and said that he knew we wrote several publications on sales strategies. He asked if he wrote something that we could use, would we pay him if we used it in creative selling? And I said, well, tell me why you think these articles would be good. And he said, well, I sold 350 cars last year. Now, I know that in the car business, 350 cars is a lot of names on the dotted line. So I really didn't know how credible this guy was. So I said, well, why don't you leave me your card and, and I'll get back to you. He left my office and I thought about it for a few minutes. Then I decided to make a call to check on him. So I didn't call his dealership. I called the sales manager at his competition. I, I asked the sales manager at the dealership on the other side of town if he knew of this person. And he said, oh yeah, the guy's nuts, you know. I said, excuse me? He said, yeah, the guy's a real loony. I said, well, wait a minute. I thought this was person was a, a pretty good salesman. He said, the guy's not a good salesman. He can't close. He's terrible. I wouldn't have him on my floor. I said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. This guy told me he sold 350 cars last year, and the manager said, oh, yeah, he sold 350 cars all right, but he's crazy. He talks to everybody. He doesn't care who you are. He asks everybody if they want to buy a car. He probably sold 350 cars all right, but he probably talked to 2,000 people. I found out that there's a lot of salespeople in this country, uh, just like the one that came into my office. Now, here's a salesman that sells well above average. Uh, but he doesn't rely on walk-in traffic, doesn't rely on dealer promotion, and, and his competition thinks he's goofy. His simple formula for selling is the more people you talk to and the more people you come in contact with and try to get into your dealership, the more cars you're going to sell. It can be that simple. There's a lot of ways to create customers on your own without relying on another up through the door or waiting for the next sale ad to run. Think about this for a minute. You never see an insurance company that runs an ad that says insurance $100 over cost or special this weekend whole life 50% off. Insurance salespeople seem to have a real knack for finding prospects and customers on their own. It can be done in the car business as well. There are a lot of ways to find new customers and the easiest way to find Buick prospects and customers on your own is to first of all have the right game plan. Think about this. Make things really simple for yourself. Get hold of a legal pad. Uh, draw a line down the middle and on one side put things to do and on the other side put calls to make. Each morning make sure you have a list of people you want to touch base with on the phone and make sure you've got a list of people you want to send a card or a note to. Maybe a reminder to yourself to check the body shop and service department for leads. And if you're going to take someone that's a hot prospect to lunch, put that down too. At the beginning of the day, write on your sheet as many productive things to do as possible. Then just work your day through. Cross out each one as you do it. And by the end of the day, you'll have an idea how you spent your day, what worked and what didn't. It's an also an easy, effective way to help manage your time. The easiest way to increase your sales to sell more Buicks without having to worry when your next up is coming in is to develop your networking skills. Now networking is nothing more than the art of constant contact with the right people. A lot of people like to talk about the power of networking, but it's really more like the power of relentless pursuit. It's not just enough to concentrate on your circle of influence because without expanding that circle, after a while, you start to stagnate. 
you're talking to the same people all the time. You're not developing new leads. It's not just a matter of who do you know, it's more like who can you know. It's also a matter of wanting to do it. Unless you have the right attitude and are convinced that what you are doing will work, it's not going to happen. Attitude can work for you or it can work against you. I was uh, on a showroom floor the other day and, and while three salespeople were standing around uh, talking about business being bad, money's tight, uh, customers aren't coming in, uh, there was a salesperson that, uh, that came in and he came in by saying, boy, what a great day. I've got two cars to deliver, uh, half a dozen leads to follow up, and, and I've got four appointments uh, for tonight. It just can't wait to get going. You see, attitude. It's just a matter of attitude. And a negative attitude produces negative results. Everybody you talk to could be a prospect for buying a new Buick. But don't overlook the basics. And the basics start right under your nose, here on your desk. By now, you should have a sticker on your phone with the word opportunity. And every time the phone rings with someone inquiring about a new Buick, you've got a great opportunity to make a new contact. Create a new prospect. Get them in to meet you face to face. People usually don't say on the phone, I'll buy it, here's my visa number, or send one over COD. The best you can do is get their name, try for a phone number or an address, and try for an appointment. You can also get them to be your friend. Think about it. Do you really try to find out who's calling when someone inquires about a new Buick? Or do you give your name and tell them to ask for you when they come in? And something else about incoming calls. If you don't have one of the Buick notepads to remind you, keep that legal pad next to your phone to jot down the name, phone number, address, and possible appointment. You might want to also make some notes of the phone conversation so you'll be able to refer to them when following up the lead or when your prospect comes in. Now, how about the leads you already have? If you're a seasoned salesperson or even a rookie, you've probably already got leads to follow up. There's the ups that you didn't sell first time around, friends, relatives, and other people you've spoken with that might be in the market for a new car, and any referrals from other people. Now, if you're going to add to your prospect list by finding more leads, you've got to have some system for sorting them out. If your dealership already has a prospect card system, use the ones they provide. If they don't, a simple 3 by 5 card will do for listing a name and all pertinent information. Make sure you make a note on the card every time you have any contact with the prospect and sort them out in some fashion that makes sense to you. If you're going to follow up leads that you're currently working on, don't sit down and make a few calls, get verbally abused, and lose the desire to make any more. It's really important to feel good about the first two or three calls of the day. So, here's the secret. Make the first calls to people that you like or that you know that like you. The next ones will be easy after that. In fact, if you call one of your customers that you know are happy with their car, call to see how they're doing. Ask if they have any questions or if you can help them in any way and politely ask if they know of anyone else that might be interested in owning a new Buick. They won't slam the phone down on you. They won't say they're not interested in bang, hang up, and they won't make you feel like a second-class citizen. Starting with a few easy calls will make the harder calls a breeze. Now, there are going to be a lot of times when you follow up a lead only to have to leave a message or, worse yet, you get an answering machine. Leaving a message by saying something like, call me back about buying a new Buick probably won't make the prospect overly eager to return your call. But leaving a message for someone by saying, tell him I've got good news for him or on an answering machine, Jim, I've got some good news, please call me back, will probably result in a return call. People usually are curious to see what the good news is. Now, when following up a lead on the phone, remember, it's tough to sell a new Buick over the phone. The best you can usually do is to get them in one more time, get them in to see you face to face. And it's a lot easier to get someone in to meet you if you can get them to be your friend first. 
One of the problems about leads is that they're perishable. A lot of salespeople just don't realize that hot leads can cool off quickly. Prospects may buy someplace else or, or maybe just lose interest. It's easy to get a few leads from an auto show or the Buick 800 numbers and leave them on your desk with the idea of, well, I'll get to them tomorrow. Prospects thoughts about buying a new car though can change quickly. They might decide uh, to buy another make, buy from another dealer, or maybe just not buy one at all. A good lead t today might be no lead tomorrow. Every Buick salesperson should have a conscientious program for following up leads on a daily basis. There's a lot of right ways and there's a lot of wrong ways to follow up leads from referrals. Picture this. Here's a salesperson that's starting off the day with four leads to follow up and the first person just told him to forget it. He bought a new car from the competition yesterday. Here's his next few calls. Hi, Mr. Ashley? Yeah, this is Steve Arthur down here at Central City Motors. Are you still interested in buying a new car? Not really? Well, okay, sorry. Uh, didn't mean to bother you. Hi, is this Cheryl Brown? Hi, Cheryl. This is Steve Arthur down here at Central City Motors. Can I sell you a Buick today? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. No, I didn't realize you were busy. Uh, can I call you back? No. Okay. Well, thanks anyways. Bye now. There's no rapport. There's no basic qualifying. It's a lot easier if you start the call something like this. Hi, Mr. Ashley. This is Steve Arthur down here at Central City Motors. I'm just checking to see if you received the letter that I sent. Oh, you did? That's great. I'll tell you, at my house, only the bills seem to get delivered. Weren't you surprised on how low the payments would be? Did you tell your wife about the colors we have in stock? Hi, is this Cheryl Brown? Hi, Cheryl. This is Steve Arthur down here at Central City Motors. Do you have a minute to talk? Oh, I'm sorry. I've got a couple of youngsters at my house, too. Let me call you back this afternoon, okay? Would around 3 o'clock be okay? Great. Concentrate more on first establishing a personal relationship with your prospect than trying to sell them a car over the phone. Not every single lead you follow up is, is going to come in and buy a, a new Buick. That's crazy. Half the secret, though, in following up leads is being able to handle rejection. It's easier on the phone than in person. It's a lot easier to put rejection out of your mind if you just go on to the next call. Rejection, you see, in the car business is a fact of life. You can't possibly sell everybody. Not everybody is, is going to want to be your friend. And, and not only that, not every deal is going to go through. Learning to deal with rejection is half the battle of achieving success. Having more than enough prospects and leads is also the easiest way to not letting rejection affect your day. Nobody will come in to meet you in person unless they feel it's going to benefit them or do something for them. Now, one of the easiest ways to get a person's attention to help get them to stop by is to offer them something for free. Also, the easiest way to help make a person your friend is to give them something. So what do you give? How much do you spend? Well, that part is up to you. Here are some of the items from the Buick Premium Catalog, things from $1 to $10. With some car salespeople, the more serious the customer, the bigger the incentive is used to get them back one more time. There are a countless number of items that you can personalize. Things like keychains, pens, flashlights, golf tees and markers, notepads, calendars, pocket knives, tire gauges. The list is endless. Some are practical, some are clever. Use something that you think will work with the image that you want to portray. Finding more prospects takes a certain amount of personal advertising. You've got to let people know where you are when they're ready to buy a new car. It's also a way of getting them 
in to see you personally. Personal advertising starts with those little billboards you carry in your pocket with your name on them, your business cards. Now, you read stories about guys that carry thousands of cards around. They take them to football games and throw them up in the air with, when a team scores a touchdown, or they plaster them in restaurants and car washes or give them out 12 at a time. A lot of these make good stories, but usually the effectiveness is a, a little questionable. In fact, some of the things you hear are downright ridiculous. There are some clever ways of using your business cards that will give you and your dealership a good image and probably will create some business. You might want to staple your business card to your check when paying a bill by mail. Let them know you sell Buicks for a living in order to pay your bills. Many times the person handling the check will have to look at your card even if it's just to throw it away. How about leaving your business card with a tip in a restaurant? Not a bad idea, particularly if it's a decent tip and the card has a note that says, bring this card in for a free gift. More sales are probably lost through giving out business cards than are, are possibly made. When a customer asks for a, a business card after a card demonstration, many times it's just a nice way for the customer to exit from your dealership. <laughs> Sometimes it can be the kiss of death. It's like the customer saying, uh, you haven't sold me, so give me your business card so I can get out of here gracefully. <laughs> what happens is uh, you give them a card and then they immediately leave. You know, there are books and seminars that tell you to leave your business cards everywhere, but sometimes it, it not only takes a little common sense, it takes some tact and it also takes some diplomacy. But personal advertising is important. Business cards, when used properly, can be a real plus. If you don't have a card handy when a customer asks for one, and they have a legitimate need, there's a, a couple of things you can do. Uh, take a blank check from your checkbook that has your name and phone number on it and tear it in half and give them the part with your name. Or you could do this. You could take a 3 by 5 uh, blank uh, white card and write your name and phone number in real large letters on it. It's pretty hard not to remember it, and a, and a card that size isn't easy to uh, get lost in a pocket. The secret of getting mileage from your business cards is to f use some common sense be creative, but don't do anything to cheapen your image. Supermarkets, car washes, laundromats usually have bulletin boards that you'll find dozens if not hundreds of business cards attached. And usually placing your card in the middle of, of people selling insurance, real estate, water softeners, along with Amway salespeople, and someone selling a boat probably won't get you much of a response. But if you put up a card with a note that could pique curiosity or interest, there's a chance someone might look you up. There's a salesperson that has all his business cards imprinted with a large $35 on the back. Uh, customers, prospects, and suspects ask, what's that for? He always replies that that's what he gives anybody that gives him a name that results in a sale. It's an attention getter, a conversation starter. All these ideas come under zero-cost prospecting. There are a lot of ways to find new customers by spending a little more than a few stamps. How about this? How about preparing a short talk along with a few slides on the quality of American cars today? Buick definitely fits the program, and you can offer this talk to all the area Rotary, Kiwanis, Lions, and other service clubs. Be a little creative, and you can be the most visible car salesperson in your community. If you've got someone that you think might be interested in a new Buick, how about calling them and offer to bring one over to their home or office for a test drive? Let them test drive a Park Avenue, LeSabre, or whatever without the hassle of coming to the showroom. Who knows? You might be able to close a deal with, without them ever sitting at your desk. Now, if it's a previous prospect that's still on the fence, how about inviting them to lunch? You pick them up in the car they're considering and then have them drive the car to the restaurant. A little obligation can go a long way. Now, your daily paper can supply you with a lot of ideas on where to look for prospects. For example, lottery winners, people that have just been promoted in their job, or people that have just bought new homes in expensive neighborhoods. You certainly don't want, to want them to have an old clunker in their driveway with a new house, do you? How about this? Go out and take a picture of their new house, and then send it to them with a note saying, Picture a new Buick in your driveway. 
maybe offer them an enlargement of the picture just for stopping by. They're only a couple of dollars or less at your local photo store. There are so many places uh, to create customers without relying on walk-in traffic or, or dealer advertising. The, the problem is sometimes we forget the basics. Looking to the service department for leads or, or going after orphan owners uh, or maybe uh, reviving dead prospect files. You have to think about it each day. It really has to be part of your game plan. It has to be part of your uh, daily routine. A car salesperson can increase their income uh, tremendously if they just discipline themselves to, to block off some time each day uh, to do two things. First of all, spend an hour working to retain their customer base. And the second thing is, uh, spend an equal amount of time working to reach uh, competitive prospects, uh, those that currently own or might be prospects of, of Ford or of Chrysler or of Imports. It, it sure beats uh, rocking back and forth on your feet waiting for the next stop to come in the door. These repair orders back here in the service department as well as the ROs in the body shop can supply you with a raft of prospects. There's nothing wrong with taking one and calling the owner. Tell them who you are and mention that you just saw their car in your shop. Ask them if they've ever thought of trading it in rather than having it fixed because you've got someone that might be interested in that particular make and model car. It doesn't hurt to ask and it doesn't hurt to make a friend in the process. These files in your dealership could contain a number of excellent prospects that are never contacted. Now these are the people that purchased a new car from your dealership from a salesperson that's no longer there. These customers become orphan owners with no specific person to care for them. Take a few names each day and give them a call. Start the conversation by saying that you're sorry that the person that they purchased their car from is no longer with the dealership. And then you might say, with your permission, would it be okay if I were the one you called if there are any questions or problems? In fact, could I call you once in a while just to make sure that everything's all right? The easiest place to look for new Buick business is from previous Buick owners. Right now, Buick owner retention is good, but it could be better. Buick retains about 4 out of 10 customers, and our goal is to increase it to 50%. Now, that's not unrealistic when you consider that some other makes do as high as 60%. Keeping in touch is the key here. Not just once a year or three years later, just to see if they're ready to trade it in. That 30-day period after the customer takes delivery of his new car is where it starts. The day after he drives the car home, he should get a thank you note from you in the mail. And then five days later, you should call just to make sure everything's okay. And then 15 days later, it would be nice if you sent your customer a small gift to show your appreciation for the sale. And then about 30 days later, call, see if there's any questions, and then politely ask for referrals. Asking for a referral, it's the who else do you know approach to selling new Buicks is not really that hard. It's really a matter of knowing what to say and, and when to say it. Uh, the first time you might want to ask for a referral is when your customer completes the deal on their new car. Never again will they be as excited as when they know the car is really theirs. And after the sale is completed and you tell them to call you if you can ever be of any help to them, all you have to do is say, by the way, before you leave, could I ask you a favor? I get most of my business from repeats and referrals from customers like yourself. Do you know of anyone, maybe a friend, relative, neighbor, or maybe someone at work, someone perhaps that knows you've been looking for a new car that one of these days might be in the market for a newer used car? And then just wait. If the customer thinks of you as a friend, they'll rack their brains trying to think of a name they can give you. It's all what you say and when you ask.
To be a successful professional salesperson in the 90s, uh, to sell a lot of Buicks, you've got to be self-productive. You've got to be able to come up with uh, ideas on your own. But the greatest ideas in the world don't go anywhere unless you actually do them. It takes that one extra step. You don't know unless you try. Many people buy a Buick because another family member bought a Buick or because maybe someone at work bought a Buick. People that are happy with their automobile like other people to feel the same. And this is where Buick has the edge. This is where quality really plays an important part. Finding prospects and customers through your own direct mail program can work. And it doesn't mean sending out a thousand pieces a day. Just a few notes and cards each day is all it really takes. And those direct mail pieces include the, the thank you notes, the birthday and anniversary cards, the Christmas cards, and, and the goodwill wishes. Now, as far as anniversary cards go, it's not your customer's anniversary. It's their car's anniversary. Let them know you're still around and you value their business. Put yourself in their place. Wouldn't you have a great positive feeling about a salesperson that one year later or even sooner sends you a card to let you know that he or she still values your business and remembers you? Now everybody talks about one or two percent return on direct mail pieces that, that cost upwards of a dollar each. But we know of a dealer that sent out 3,000 envelopes containing a flyer announcing a tent sale and 100 of these envelopes were accidentally sent empty without the flyer or anything else. Now, out of those 100, 30 people called saying they got an empty envelope from the dealership and wanted to know what was in there. That's a 30% response. Now, I'm not saying you should send out 1,000 a, a empty envelopes, but at least send something that will attract the recipient's attention. In selling, if you can't close, nothing else you do right counts. But in prospecting, if you can't get them into your dealership to meet you nose to nose, uh, face to face, you won't ever get a chance to close. When you follow up a lead, think about what you're really trying to do. You're not trying to sell a Buick. You're really trying to make a friend who will come in to see you on a certain day and time to look at a Buick, to try one out, to drive one. Once you get yourself into a regular routine of looking for new prospects, the rest comes a lot easier. You'll have a regular stream of leads to follow up every day. But when you call these people on the phone, think about making them your friend first. Find out if you have something in common with these people. Always leave the door open for calling them back one more time. And if they are not that responsive the first time around, hey, don't push it. Let them know you've got their best interest at heart and put them on the back burner for a while. Try them again a while down the road. Now, when you set an appointment, make sure you confirm it one more time before you hang up. Say something like, uh, uh, just to make sure, Jerry, uh, you'll be in uh, tomorrow between seven and eight. Now, when they agree, you might wanna say, great, I've got a couple of cars to show you I think you're going to love, or super, let me see how low I can get the payments for you. Now, sometimes your prospect won't show up. Sometimes they cool off quickly or decide to buy someplace else. It's a fact of life. And sometimes, though, they have a legitimate reason for not showing up. So if you call back to see what the problem was, you might want to make it sound like it was partially your fault. Something like, uh, I waited here as long as I could, but I had to leave because of, uh, for whatever reason. I'm sorry that I missed you. Can we reschedule? Be nice and be a little assertive. A little positive action can go a long way. Right now, Buick is gaining market share because we're listening to our customers, we're building a better car, we're retaining more customers, and we're aggressively going out to attract other manufacturers' customers. There's going to be a lot of change going on as we move further into the decade of the 90s. Selling at the retail level is changing and you're going to have to be better equipped to get your share of today's market. You've heard that saying of whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're absolutely right. Well, couple that with it's not a matter of whether a customer is going to buy or not, 
It's just a matter of when.